Australian, right? You are. Yes, you are in Australia. No, I'm in London. Oh, okay. I'm in London. Hello, yeah. everyone. This is Agnes with an interview with Kwana. Kwana already did an interview with us. Hello, Kwana. <laughs> Hi, Agnes. Hi, everybody. Kwana, can you tell people where you are on the Google map? I am. I'm in Denver, Colorado, yep. USA. Beautiful. It's very sunny today, as usual, here. We have a lot of sun in Colorado. I'm jealous. Now that I'm in London, I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, but yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we had a bit of a chat via email and we said we would do a part two when the timing was right. And the timing is right. And just would love to hear what's going on, how you're going with your self-love, what's happening in your life, share as much or as little as you want to share. And, you know, it's always good to hear what people are doing. People are doing, yes, I agreed. Yeah, so off over to you, Kwana. Thank you. Um, well, when Agnes and I did our interview back in June, I had um, just gotten back together with my person and I had a couple of months prior to that, I had discovered Agnes uh, on YouTube. And but prior to that, I had done years of spiritual study, spiritual self work for probably since 2001 or two. I'd really started on that journey. And so, as we all know, that life is not. Uh, supposed to be easy answers or one easy way there is no one way and i think uh, part of what i've learned through this process is is most certainly um, revisiting those things and the reasons i started off on my spiritual path as, so to speak years ago and so when i did that interview with agnes it was mainly to share what I had gone through to the point of in my, in my relationship with my person and then what I had discovered within myself that had come up for me, which I knew going into it. I didn't know what the issues were going to be, but I knew that they were going to be. And I knew he was the perfect person for that because our society really trains us, especially in romantic relationships. There's this one per perfect person out there for you, and the person is going to do everything you want them to do, and and that's just not true. And I don't believe, for me personally, on my journey, um, trying to find that person that's going to fit in uh, to exactly what I want them to be, that is not my path, because I understand that healing my own healing work is the most important thing so uh with agnes's work talking about all the self-love work she discusses and there is a lot of discussion about neville goddard and and law, law of attraction but i think the root of it and the most important thing is we've all been discussing here is the self-love and the self-healing and that is ongoing that's going to be for the rest of your life it's not just until you get the thing, you get the thing. Mm. And so, so even though um, my person and I had gotten back together, there were still a lot of other issues that uh, I still needed to look deeply at. And I've discovered that, and I think it's a good thing, <laughs> that, that if you haven't really, if you haven't resolved, if you haven't healed enough, of your stuff the universe will get louder and louder mm. and louder and one of my issues as we've just Agnes has discussed in her channel is victimhood feeling like a victim and a lot of it, it feels like just tapes running in the background that you're not clearly aware of and you I wouldn't have necessarily thought that of myself or admitted that to myself but I started to realize, especially after the interview with, with Agnes, there were some things that had happened that um, presented that to me very clearly, that 
Uh, I had a, not because, it's not so much that you were feeling sorry for yourself and going around saying that you're a victim. It's simply, it could be experiences you've had as a, as a child, what you maybe went through with your family, or even ancestral, which is what Hono, Paul Ho'oponopono discusses, mm. that you're not consciously aware of. So when those things are happening over the summer, and um, I shared some of those things with Agnes and also uh, realized I wanted to wait until I was, I knew I was going to get through it, but I knew I needed some time to do that and really dig deep. So in, on the same theme of um, the recent uh, um, videos that were posted last week um, by two ladies that were talking about being stuck mm -hmm. and haven't had exactly, you know, these great success stories. You've had some success yeah. here. You know, you've two steps forward, one step back, etc. And that's really been the journey for me. That's really what's been going on. Yep. Yep. And I think that like what you're saying, sharing, okay, this is where I'm at. And yes, I want to change certain things. I need to move forward in certain areas, but I do agree with you, Kwana, we do need to go back and unearth and uh, whether you use Ho'oponopono or whether you, you know, sit in your own type of meditation and go back to the inner child and let those old feelings come up and try and let them out and let them go rather than just regurgitating them and it keeps affecting relationships in particular mm -hmm. or money or, you know, there seems to be three areas. There's not enough time. There's not enough love. There's not enough money. Those three areas seem to be really big. And that's where they usually, one of those blows out, if not multiple of those blows out, um, especially in December, <laughs> because especially the, there's not enough time. There's not enough money or the two top ones out of those three. But I think it's, um, you know, we have to, and I think Abraham Hicks says it really well you are where you are and you just go from where you are. You don't have to be further ahead. You don't have to be better. You don't have to be, yes, of course we'd like to manifest more, but you got to make peace in the now and surrender and let go and allow more so that you're not so traumatized or disturbed by, I just got to get over there where that, at whatever that is that I think I need so that I can be happy here now. And you know, it's, it sounds easy, all those words, but yes, when you're in the middle of something and you're, you know, your bank account's on minus and you got debt or you, you've got a health condition that's kicking your ass and you need an operation or you need, you know, your relationships has fallen apart. Yeah, very easy to say and not easy to do. But I do think sharing honestly where you're at for not too long a period of time so it doesn't reactivate it, but go, okay, this is where I'm at now. Where can I go from here? And, and you know, take an honest inventory of, of that for yourself exactly and i think i think part of the purpose where agnes and some other folks are coming from is law of attraction and neville goddard and all these other wonderful teachers and ideas i think gives us an understanding of the power that we have the power of our, our minds the power of our consciousness but I think because we're on the earth, <laughs> we have to learn to become disciplined with so many other things first. And I think also that there's an aspect, a huge aspect of letting go of the need for things, the need of trying to get and trying to this and trying to that. Yeah. So there's also uh, that code of lines with, there seems to be two schools of thought in my journey with spiritual source of spiritual stuff okay yeah yeah the one school of thought is uh you got to take massive action law of attraction you you are in control you're in charge of the universe you're the own creator there's that mm. create what you want there's another school of thought that's about allowing yeah about being of service which is about um that the universe or God or whatever you want to call it knows better than you than what than you the universe or God knows what's right for you and you really don't so that's a more humbled um, the other is more go and get it you can do it you're you're the creator the other is you you need to surrender and allow the the, mm. the 
universe to show you and let things unfold for you. Yeah. We tend to stand in our way. So I've noticed that that, that can be a colliding or seem like, maybe it's not. I'd love your ideas on that. Mm. It can become very confusing. Yes. There's so many, and there's also so many different ways out there. And I think it's all. Yeah. But because yeah. I got into, I think I shared with you over the summer that I really delved into Ho'oponopono even more. And um, there's a, a lady named Mabel Katz. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she uh, was a direct student working closely with Dr. Hugh Len. Yeah. She was one of his students for many years before she went on her own. And she wrote a book called The Easiest Way. Okay. She shared my, my best study of her material. She's on YouTube as well. She is from Argentina and she's a delightful lady, but she's talking about um, when Joe Vitale came to, to work with him, work with Dr. Hugh Len, the whole, when he wrote, when Joe Vitale wrote his books, what she makes clear is, Joe Vitale took his own version of it. Yeah. It's actually not what Dr. Hewen teaches. Yeah. So the four phrases, the I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. That was something that Joe Vitale had marketed. And she, she's like, thank God, because it got our message out there. Thank God for Joe Vitale, she says. Yeah. The whole is quite different, and is different. And she said that pretty much... Um, She's explained that what Ho'oponopono is now is simply thank you. Thank you, or I love you. You don't have to say the four phrases. You can if you want to. She's saying, but uh, just saying thank you. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And there's other tools that I've learned. And so she, she was just wanting, she wasn't trying to be disrespectful of Joe Vitale. She really appreciates him. But she was trying to make it clear that there was a differentiation. Yep. Here's what he put out there and what um, Dr. Hu Yulen was teaching. Yeah. Joe Vitale was to get it on a more global level, which is what he did. Yes. And again, what I learned from Mabel Katz is that the Ho'oponopono is a very surrendered position. So not only are you cleaning up your ancestor stuff and stuff you don't even know about that's replaying on the screen. She calls yep. it the delete key. You're yep. pressing everything you say, thank you, thank you, thank you, or I love you, I love you. You're pressing the delete key. Yeah. Um, a great analogy. And that, um, and, and then what's right and perfect comes to you because you're getting out of the, you're giving your inner child, your subconscious permission to let go of this other stuff and to bring in, to clear it out, mm. or karma or whatever. But yeah. But it, what? And she says most of it, whatever problems you're going through, most of it is from your ancestors, and that yeah. you came here, you agreed to come here to clean it up. And so, if you are presented with Ho'oponopono, or if you are interested in Ho'oponopono, there's a reason for it. Mm. Right? a little deeper and find out more about it and <clears throat> she also shares a lot about her journey and what she went through when she got to the point of uh, working with Dr. Hu Len back in their uh, mid 90s or something like that so along those lines again that, I think that can it, it recently left me in this mm. <laughs> do I surrender or do I yeah Am I, or am I, is it, is it upon me to create? I mean, what, because she even says that she has some interviews also with Dr. Hula and they did a few years ago and she asks him about visualizing and, and law of attraction. And he, he doesn't agree with the secret and all that stuff. He thinks that, that that's, that's you trying to tell the creator what is best for you. Yeah. So, as you can see, there's kind of two. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I think yes. I I came to that same conclusion some years ago about what you're saying, and it is. I agree. Two different schools of thought today. 
having looked at it, having thought about it, having tried it different ways, what I understand today that works best for me is that God helps those who help themselves, which, you know, my partner constantly reminds me that God doesn't do everything for you. You actually have to do certain things, whether it's within yourself, whether it's work on your self love to get yourself in a place where you can help yourself. And you don't just lay there like a turtle on its back and go, God's just going to come and help me or the universe is just going to help me. So that part I really like and agree with. Um, I love Ho'oponopono because I think it is so prevalent in this world at this time, whether it's from the 90s to 2018, what I've seen kind of in the last 28 years is that we are very much action figures. Mm -hmm. And I think being an action figure is very overdone and the allowing, surrendering and living from it Neville way is very much underdone. Mm -hmm. So I see, and I look, I look at people in my life, in my family, in my friends, in my, the people I come across that I know enough about them to see what they actually practice and what results they get. I see the people that are really, you have to work hard. People, action figures, often look exhausted, often don't get enough sleep, often haven't got very good self-love and self-care. And the people that practice Ho'oponopono, dissolving stuff within them, understanding everyone's me pushed out, looking within, they expend much less energy. They look much less, much less exhausted. Their self-love is much better. You can see it on their face. Your face is the evidence of what you do to yourself. Yes. How you look on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you look peaceful? Do you look angry? Do you look tired? Do you look strung out? Do you look stressed? Are you talking a million miles an hour? You know, and you can see that even when you watch people's YouTubes at different times, you can see all these different things, no matter what your YouTube subject is, it doesn't matter, but you get the feel of a person. So when I looked at all that, I thought, right, I know God helps those who help themselves. That makes sense to me that God isn't just plonking me here and I, I don't have to do anything. That is, seems to be an, an extremely one end of, you know, if you're looking at two different ends, that's one end of the stick for me. The other end is you're trying to do everything, trying to action everything, trying to um, follow up on everything. You know, it's the people that are constantly, I need to follow up on all the phone calls I make. I need to follow up on all those emails I sent. It's this trying to make stuff happen. So that's the other, the other end as well. So saying all that, I find looking at that whole bag of different bits and pieces, Kwana, the balance being in the middle for me has been the most restful, the most peaceful. I do a little bit of action if it's inspired. I'm not an action figure anymore. I try and conserve my energy rather than blowing it out and using it all like I used to and ending up with glandular fever or chronic fatigue and stuff like that. Yeah. I, and, and making sure the basics are in place with sleep, drinking water, eating food that's alive, that's made by nature, not processed stuff, exercise. I feel good. And that is the indicator to me that my life is better because I'm more calm, I'm more peaceful, and therefore my external surroundings are more calm and more peaceful, whether it's around money, relationships, work, my health, those things have definitely leveled out and improved and I'm doing more meaningful work. So I think, okay, I, I, I'm very drawn to Neville. I love his you work on the inside and the outside changes. His whole everything as you pushed out fits in with the Ho'oponopono for me because the Ho'oponopono is saying, what is it in me that I need to dissolve 
that this is in front of me. Again, they kind of go together. Um, I love Abraham Hicks. You just have to feel good. Love that from her. I love that she says the art of allowing. She says it again and again and again. And that's taken years for me to not just hear, but to do. Because it's the inactive stuff that is much more difficult than the action orientated techniques around the law of attraction. So I find as the years go by, I'm doing less and less and less out there. I'm doing more and more and more meditation, calming down, being at peace, trusting there's enough time, love and money. That's where I put my head as much as I can. And I withdraw from trying to do, make those things work. My energy is more conserved. I conserve. I've got reserves of energy now before I never had any. I was always on zero heading towards minus because I was always overdoing because I was working too hard because I had fear of scarcity around money, fear of scarcity around not having enough love. And I certainly didn't have enough time because I was trying to chase my tail to make more money to pay off the debts I had. So it's like all of that has through doing all these things I've just mentioned Every area of my life has improved. It's calmed down. All my debts are gone. I don't owe anyone a cent to anyone on the planet. That alone makes your mental state a thousand percent better because so many people have debt and I know it's incredibly stressful. So I've been there. So it's like all those bits and pieces is bringing me to the balance. It's not way over there. It's not way over there. I still think my top things, Ho'oponopono, meditation, Neville's teachings, Abraham's allowing and remembering that living in the end and, and just imagination creates reality. If I could put it in a little sandwich bag, that would be what I would say is my most preferred things. Right. And, and I think people, we have to remember too that a Course in Miracles talks about having an individualized curriculum. And I think what that means for me is that what has worked for Agnes may not necessarily be. Mm. Free. Exactly. So facing her down saying, well, I, I did everything you said, but it hasn't worked for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's trial and error. It's trial and error. Yeah. yeah. And, and, Mabel Katz, the lady I was referencing earlier, who's a, who's a direct student of Dr. Hewlett and in the Ho'oponopono, she talks about having just one path. Yeah. Or finding one path. Um, and I don't necessarily agree with that. Mm. I mean, I think because look, I'm, I, I'm all over the place. Like, I, I think if you want to do just one kind of way to help you, Fine. If, if I think whatever in the moment gives you a sense of peace, I really think the bottom line is cultivating a sense of, of what your a, a peace of, mm. of, of your sense of inner peace, even if there's chaos going on around you. For me right now, I'm still winding down those pieces of chaos. I'm still in the yeah. middle of it. Yeah. Well, I, even more in a little. I, I don't know if there's an end. I know that that. I'm still in it. Yeah. But I do have a lot more awareness than I maybe did six months ago, six weeks ago, a week ago. Yeah. And when, and I, whatever ideas can help me give, give me a sense of peace because I've been so, I have ate up and explored so many different books and authors and teachers mm. and I, they all have wonderful things to contribute. Yep. So, and I also think that being your own personal leader, your own personal guru, your own personal, yep. be your own uh, uh, guide, ultimately. There's a very famous, um, she was a Hay House author, author, I'm not going to say her name. Uh, she was something I, someone I really enjoyed her books for years and years. She talked about angels and this and that and the other. She's very famous. Yeah. And she recently dumped all of that and decided to go a completely different direction. Okay. She's a born again Christian now and she's denounced she denounces 
law of attraction. She denounces all of that stuff. And I think for her, I, I don't know her, but I think for her, it, it was a matter of that was right for her. Yeah. Uh, and she lost a, a lot of people had looked to her as a guru, as a leader. And perhaps that's part of the lesson because teachers are human beings too. We, we've learned that about famous people. Obviously, when yeah. there's famous, successful people committing suicide, yeah. what does that tell you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to disengage from what's going on with famous people, what's going on with spiritual leaders, teaching, mm. like herself. Yeah. Become your own. Mm. And, and it's okay if things are still a little messy. Yeah. Be at peace with that. Mm. Be at peace. Another great author that I think is amazing is Eckhart Tolle. Have you read any of his books? Have you heard of Eckhart Tolle, Agnes? I have. I don't gel with him at all. Oh, you don't? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like someone bought me the power of now and I just didn't, speak, just didn't speak to me. Didn't speak to me at that time, which okay. was probably 20 years ago or 15 years ago. So if I picked it up now, would it be different? Perhaps. Well, the thing, you know, I first came across this book about four years ago, Power of Now. Yeah. And... At the time, I felt it was like I couldn't really absorb everything he was saying. He seemed like quite evolved. But the couple things I got out of that book, which I thought were great, were um, when you're worrying, yeah. the way to, to check yourself is go, is there anything, am I having a problem right now? Am I having a problem right now? Mm. And probably close to 100% of the time, you're not really having a problem right now. And yeah. that's one, a, one step of getting into the now, the present moment. Mm. And then another thing that I got from that book is he said, you are not your problems. You yeah. may have things, life situations that you need to deal with, but you do not have problems. Mm. And so two big takeaways from that book and recently I started listening to some of his YouTube stuff and he's been on Oprah and I understand what you're saying at first it's like what is, what is he talking about what the heck is he talking about yeah it's just a style of writing yeah the style yeah. of writing and, yeah. and it presents itself but I think I think you've talked about this with Dan that and we've heard it say that when the student is ready the teacher or the whatever yeah and for me it's definitely in increments Yes, yes. And also depending what mood I'm in. Correct. So I, think, I think Eckhart Tolle, he also, his second book uh, is uh, the, A New Earth. Yes. I think the messages are powerful because um, he talks about the process, especially when you're dealing with toxic situations, problems with people. And I think that that can trip us up, especially if we're trying to focus on Law of attraction, do I allow, do I visualize, mm -hmm. do? and then we're dealing with the what is. That's what Abraham calls the, the what is. Yes. So you might be visualizing and you feel good after you visualize, but then you, you get the bill or you get the this or the problem yeah. in your face. And I think I know because it's certainly been a struggle for me. Yeah. For a lot of people on your channel that say it's not working or what am I yep. doing wrong and a, that, that it's the dealing with the, the stuff that's still going on in your life. Mm. And I have felt at times where I have uh, certainly have, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's are we are that powerful where we can imagine. And as Neville Goddard says, you know, imagine and, and really like, create this swell of energy where we're we're living a soup in it we're living in it but then if it hasn't manifested yet and you're still dealing with the old stuff that can be very frustrating and completely throw you off you feel yeah. like you're failing and i think in relation to when you're talking about um having people send in videos about what what's going on and people feeling stuck 
Yeah. What do you what do you think about that? I'm wondering because because that 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 could make you feel. There's been times in the last six months where I felt very discouraged. Yep. I felt like um, and also for anyone who's watching this, anyone who emailed me over the summer asking for advice or help, I apologize if I didn't get back to you. I had a very very uh, intense last six months, so I apologize. Yeah. yeah. But and also I didn't feel like I had my own thing together. Enough yes. To yep. So yeah. I have felt, um, especially in the last few months this year, like, what have I done wrong? What, I, I've been practicing this stuff for years and years and years, not just law of attraction, but just meditation, and all kinds of different stuff. And why am I still having problems? Or um, also I've noticed the more conscious you are, the more co conscious you're trying to be, it's almost worse when something goes, quote, wrong. Yep. It's worse when you lose your peace. It's almost worse because you, you yeah. feel like you should either know better or you've had yep. the experiences of peace, the experiences of all of creating, but then something falls apart. Or so you just I, and again, I think there's got to be a way to let that go. Yep, live in a more a place where you're not feeling like you're thrown around so much by all these different. Mm. You know what I mean? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think it's letting go of self-judgment. You know, there was stuff's going on. You go, okay, well, I must have, some, this is in front of me. You know, I, okay, this has really knocked me off, whether it's around money, relationships, work, health, because they're usually the top four. You go, okay, one of those areas has really knocked me out here. Um, okay. I need to go deeper within and I need to, I mean, take Jerry Hicks, for example, he's, he's part of Abraham Hicks and, and he dies of cancer. He's a huge, like you said, he's a human being. He had still stuff in him and it still was not able to crack the fact that he died of an illness so you think how could he die of an illness he does all, but you, you could you can you, you still have your own stuff like you say stuff that comes from your ancestors it comes down to you and then you are you able to dismantle it sometimes people some people can't and 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 they exit the planet before they can and and that's the way that thing ended is that a good thing or a bad thing from when we, where we're standing, we look at Jerry Hicks and go, Oh, and you know, I know a lot of people were up in arms about that. And you know, there was lots of stuff written about it and all this. And I think, well, hang on a minute. Jerry Hicks was Jerry Hicks. And you know, uh, what can you say? He, he's a human being and he has feelings and he has beliefs and he has stuff from his own childhood and so be it. So you go, okay, if it can be like that for him, it can be like that for me. Kind of in a way, if you look at Jerry Hicks as an example, it kind of lets you let yourself off the hook a bit. Well, that's a great example. And it probably was his time. It probably was his time. I mean, Wayne Dyer died yeah. prior yeah. to that. Yeah. So, so prior to that, who, what was the other one, Quana? Wayne Dyer. Yeah. And who did you say after that? No, I was just saying Wayne Dyer prior oh, to that. Oh, Wayne Dyer. Yeah. Prior to him dying, crashing, he had leukemia. Yeah. So, exactly. and he talked about that, I think, his last PBS special. Yeah. I, I think that's the thing again, and I think that's what I love about what Eckhart Tolle is trying to touch on in his stuff is yeah. you're going to die, okay? And it's okay. <laughs> exactly. You know, he talks a lot about the world of form, and I think maybe that can be uh, maybe a trip up if you're not if you haven't done enough peace work or if you're not doing enough self-love foundational work in trying to do law of attraction you're still getting hung up on form and the, and the thing of it is that forms are going to change forms are going to yeah how many, how many places i've lived in i've lost places to live, yep. places to live. i've lost cars I've, yep. gotten cars I've had relationships things are always in flux and i think yeah. part of getting that sense of more peace is accepting that yeah. that's how it is. If you can accept it, yeah. it accepting the what is. Yeah. And Abraham talks about that too, accepting the what is. it, And it, it is not about not taking action either because that's the other thing people mm. argue about. Well, um, 
if you're saying that I have to accept what is, well, what do you mean? I'm just supposed to not do anything. I'm just supposed to be passive and not have any passion. Yeah. No. no. Right? I mean, when you, I, and, and those glimpses when I'm at, when I'm there, those glimpses, <laughs> there's something else that you sense in you, your greater self, even if it's just for a half a second, you can, you have a glimpse of it. And it's, it's, that's, I think, what I'm learning in Ho'oponopono, any, any method that helps you get a sense of more peace. Yep. Because the whole thing be getting more, I mean, yeah. I, I, to talk about me pushed out, I just moved recently to a, a, a native, this place, and there have been two shootings. Okay. In the last month. One was two houses away. Yeah. So, it, I took pause. I was say, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is because Dr. Hugh Lenz says, have you ever noticed when there's a problem, you're there? When there is a <laughs> I love how he says that. <laughs> it's not, it's not, not taking action. It's not yeah. blame, being blameful of yourself. It's about um, responsibility. And if there's two shootings in my neighborhood, the whole Ho'oponopono is what is it in me? Yep. Has created this. Yeah. So that's when you just do the, the cleaning work. And in other cases, in terms of that you pushed out, it's the same same thing. Yeah. How can you go deeper and what part of me is contributing yes. to this this to, to all of this, whatever it may be. Yes. And also the the action part too. It's not about just sitting there. Mm the inspired action you know you know when you want to take you know when you need to take action it's coming from a different place yeah then go 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 the action figure like you were talking about yeah Quana, can you okay in the example because that's such a good example i've moved into this neighborhood there's been two shootings one's two doors down i'm going to apply ho'oponopono to this because i'm the i'm here I've heard about this, so I'm going to dissolve the part of me. Can you explain the mechanics of how you do that in that instance? Well, from what I've learned, particularly through my belt cats, yeah, is for example that the first shooting about six weeks ago, it was like two in the morning. I just got home from work, and I heard, I heard the pop, 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 pop. Yeah, right? and um. And then the shooting that was about two weeks ago, it was a few, couple of blocks away. And so the process of uh, Ma Bell Katz, uh, the whole point of what she explains is at this point, she said, because so many people have done so much work on Ho'oponopono, that now all you have to do is say thank you. And that came direct from Dr. He Wen in his meditation. Yeah. In other words, uh, the creator, God said to him, just tell them to say thank you. I know what they mean. So you say, you go into, you understand the problem. The mechanics is it, because Ho'oponopono means correction of errors. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're erasing all the problems that are happening around you in the life, globally, whatever, have to do with replaying memories. Yeah, that's really all that it is according to yeah the, uh, the whole point of what teaching. Yeah, so when you you can say the four phrases, "I love you," "I'm sorry," "Please forgive me," "Thank you," but she said the easier way is just "Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you." It's you're cleaning, you're cleaning. Yeah, yeah. you see it as an opportunity to clean, mm. even if it doesn't look like she says. Yeah. Even her an Argentinian accent, even if it does not look like <laughs> even if you can't tell the difference, even if it doesn't seem, you just know that something's getting erased. Even if you think you know what it is, you still don't know. You still don't know. So you go into, if you want to say the four phrases, you can, but the yeah. thank you, you say thank you, thank, thank you, or I love you. And now the one she talked about is light switch, because you're turning on the lights. Yeah. There's a few other tools. Mm. And it, it helps you um, have a sense of peace and you're erasing, um, for example, maybe it could have been, God forbid, but it could have been that 
I wasn't involved in that shooting. Or where I'm living, if I keep doing Ho'oponopono, keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you, it creates a good energy right where I live. Or yeah. what you're doing is you're giving the other mechanics, I would to answer your question, you're giving your subconscious mm. permission to erase the problem. Yeah. And you have to have a level, just like any of this other work that we're doing, you have to have a level of faith. Yeah. A level of trust mm. and a level of surrender. It's huge. Mm. One, she used, used a mantra when she was getting in trouble years ago with her life. She was saying, I surrender and I, and I trust. I surrender and I trust. I surrender and I trust. And so <clears throat> if you're interested in the Ho'oponopono philosophy, uh, I would strongly recommend um, checking out my Bell Cats, my yep. Bell Cats uh, YouTube, and um, hearing her story. It'll make a little more sense. But it is, again, along the lines of most of the other stuff that we've talked about. It, it doesn't even matter. Buddha, the Bo Buddhism has a mantra Nam myo renke kyo. Nam myo renke kyo. It mean, it's literally, it's one of their mantras. When they pray, nam myo renge kyo, it has to do with releasing karma or whatever, built up energy. Mm. So uh, just about every philosophy, even the Psalms in the Bible have relate to that. So whatever works, I feel like whatever works, it could be moment to moment. Yeah. One minute I want to, I'll maybe use this pr process. Next minute I might use something else. It really doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Yeah. Some people might disagree with that, but yeah, Dif different ways around the circle. Yeah. Different ways. So I hope that answers the question. No, and that's that good. Can I ask you, Quana, do you set an intention prior or you literally just go, I heard that shooting and you just start the whole pono. You don't need to set an intention. You don't need to set an intention. According okay. to what my bell cat says, mm. you don't need to meditate. You can meditate if you want to, she said, but you don't need to okay, I got to meditate on the shooting. I got to figure out. Yeah. You know, you just start doing it. You just and start it, doing it. Yeah. It's, it can be very challenging because when something's in front of you or if I having to argue, you're having an argument with your person or yeah. something wrong, you can go right into unconsciousness. As yeah. Job, yeah. Totally, you can just go unconscious. Yeah. And uh, lose yourself. Yes. And yes. the other thing is, Another thing that's driving, and I think, again, it's along the same lines of Ho'oponopono, Eckhart Tolle talks a lot about the pain body. I'm not sure if you've heard about a pain body, that we have a pain body. And I think uh, similar, the, the Ho'oponopono also addresses that because you're dealing with ancestor stuff. Mm. The pain body gets triggered, and you can see it getting triggered in other people. Yeah. <laughs> whoever, especially your person or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so when that, it's like some people call it the ego, some people call it the devil. Yeah. Whatever that negative energy force that seems to be dominating the planet. Because I think, I know for me personally, that um, I, I'm an empath and I can feel, I just, the empaths feel just about everything. And that energy force feels very strong right now. I don't know if anyone else is feeling that. And Agnes, I'm not sure what you, your thoughts are on that. It kind of feels like a war going on. Not light doesn't fight, but it feels like the old ways of domination and manipulation and war and control on this earth is trying to, you know, really... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It just feels mm. like because sometimes, like the people, like famous people committing suicide, and I just feel like um, that that entity, that entity pattern force, whatever it is, can also get in the way of if you're trying to manifest, if you're trying to create, if you're trying to do self love. Can I feel? What do you think about that? Because I know I've struggled with. Yeah. But I've got this other voice in me trying to sabotage everything I do. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't, I guess I don't, well, for starters, I unplug a lot from any media. I, I don't have a TV in London and 
you know, even when I stay in Airbnbs in Sydney, I often don't even switch it on unless my mum's there and then she watches stuff. But I don't, I do, I do Ho'oponopono every day. Uh, I don't necessarily do it for a particular reason or I don't have anything. I just know it feels great to do it. Sometimes it doesn't feel great to do it. Sometimes it brings up stuff. Sometimes it's the inner child needing to release stuff. And I do think it's ancestral, some stuff too, because it feels so overwhelming that you think there's no way that I've got this much emotion over that event. This is, you know, and, and there's often memories and images that come to me about particular things that have happened, things that I saw as a child, things that I didn't actually understand as a kid, but now looking at it without old eyes, I can see a bit more what's going on. So, and I actually had the, the good fortune of knowing my mum, my grandmother and my great grandmother. I was about 14 when my great grandmother died. So I got to see quite a few generations above me. I do think, I don't know quite about that, that whole global energy thing. I don't, um, I know a lot of people do talk about that. I suppose I've kind of unplugged from that too, because I do get very affected by things. So I very much minimize what gets in to my head into my heart and into my stomach where the emotions are because I know I can stew and churn on things for quite a long time. And then I end up getting incredible health issues over that. So that's why I've unplugged a lot is because I do absorb the impact of things in the health area very quickly. Um, So I protect what comes in so that I do not have to have thought processes about things these days. And that includes politics, religion, um, money, finance, financial sector stuff. I try to not saying I don't know what's going on at all, but I, I keep it down to 10%. What do I really need to know? Uh, and then the rest of the time I just really try and work very solidly on just continuing to radiate love out and do the whole ponopono because I think they're two just wonderful things to do. It's great for the self. It's great for where you're sending it to. And it is very much, you know, as we continue to do this work, I think it has an impact and an effect one person at a time. So, you know, I think it is, a, it's a big subject. I, and I don't think there's just one way around the circle for this. I think, you know, like you said, I'm, you said I'm an empath. Um, you do feel things more. Uh, We all are, we have our different way of the way we process information, how stuff comes in. So we're going to have different levels of how we, it affects and how things get in. So, you know, I can't say I, I've probably got a question mark above that. Not really can be certain or for sure about what is going on in the world out there. All I know is like what you said about the shooting. Okay, if that has just happened, why is it that I'm here? So I'm going to work on the tiny little pond that I can work on. And if I throw the pebble in, the ripples will go out and I will hopefully have dissolved something for as the ripples go out, it will give someone else relief. It will give someone else if I uphold them in the best image that I can, whether it's a person, whether it's a city, whether it's a country that you know is suffering, you know, whatever that is, that I can include that in my meditation and start to come from not just the me, me, me part. Yeah, that, that's great, Agnes. I like that, what you just said. And I think, I think for people who are watching, who are feeling, you know, I don't have it all together yet. I don't have it all. This yes. Is- um, I think we really need to let that go. Okay. Uh, I also think that, um, being as transparent as possible. Some people call it honesty. Some people call it truth. I think being, being just, just saying how it is. Yeah. Uh, this is, I'm not good at this particular thing. 
I messed up that. <laughs> yeah. And and also when you do that, there's a sense of oh. yeah. Especially and particularly in the United States, and I think this what mentality has flooded other countries is this whole pretense that we're supposed to act like we've got it all together, that we're supposed to, everyone's supposed to be fine and good all the time, and that's that's BS. You know, mm. we're supposed to act like everything, and it, it, that's not how real life is. That's not yeah. how it is. Yeah, and I think you can. And I'm not saying go and be a Debbie Downer and ruin people's day and just complain. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you come from a heart space and speak your truth, mm. those who resonate with you will hear you. Yes. Yes. They you and they will be able to relate to it. Because mm. the deep need that people have is to just go, you know, oh, yeah. To let it go and say, you know, I can relate to that. Not a complain way. But yeah. This is too and yeah. maybe I'm scared and maybe I don't know what I'm doing so I yeah. think that letting go of the need to have it all together mm. you're, you're not Even yeah you things, those things something's gonna change or something's gonna happen or something's gonna and if you can accept that yeah then, you know, along the better lines of being able to transmute situations mm -hmm. I do feel very strongly that there is an intelligence of a knowing mm energy that supports us if you look at the balance the beauty of nature and yeah. the animals, the animals are, that's where you'll find your answers and mm. I'm, I'm working on it yep to to um get in that place because that ego whatever you want to call it the pain body the ego the devil whatever you want to call it this thing that seems to take over is not the real you mm. I've said to myself lately, you know what? I didn't come here to stress about money or all this stuff. That's not why I came here. I didn't come here to jump off of a cliff because something's going wrong. Yeah. I came here to make a difference somehow. And it's mm. going to be through whatever your passion is. Yeah. Whatever your passion is, whatever it is, that's how you came to contribute. So you got to find a way. Yeah. You, job and you got to eat and all that stuff. Yeah. But find a way. Find a way. Because that's yeah. why you're, you're not here to be miserable. You're not here to, oh, I'm not doing law of attraction just right. Yes. Let let that go. And if there's a day that you feel like doing some meditations where you're living in the end and if, do it. Because yeah. I still do a lot of Agnes's meditations, especially on the Meditation channel with Skywalker. Love his voice, by the way. Yeah, good voice, isn't it? Um, do that. If another day you want to do something else. Yeah. Whatever it is, and Agnes described what she does to help her self-care, and she's in a groove. But she shared with us what she's gone through in her trials. And she, mm, and mm. she knows that, that, that things aren't perfect. Staying in that, you know, I don't watch, I do my best not to watch the news. Um, yeah. He picks on me about that because he thinks that I you need to know what's going on, and it's like, yeah. Oh, I mean, you're gonna find out anyway, but <laughs> someone will someone will tell you. He'll tell you or it'll come up on your YouTube feed or something. Yeah. And me knowing that I'm a sensitive person. Yeah. That I gotta accept that about myself, and that with people who are sensitive or empathic, you gotta let this, this stuff move through you. What we do is we tend to hang on to other people's energy. Mm. We let uh, hang on to it. We're supposed to let it move through us. Yeah. We're crying or whatever. Yeah. But I think being truthful as best you can, authentic with yourself and those, those you feel that will resonate because it gives them permission to do the same. Yeah. And then you see miracles happen. Um, because, and, and this is what, what, I, what I love about some of Eckhart Tolle's lectures on YouTube, is he talks about, you know, people you see living in mansions, they still got problems too. Yes. Just because you're famous or live in a mansion doesn't mean your problems go away. You know, a lot no. of people get that level in life and they're bored because they've done everything. But they, they still have 
you know, uh, people in their family that drive them nuts or people in their family that don't, don't talk to. And then, then you've got health issues. You just can afford to go to doctors or go to naturopaths or whatever, but doesn't mean you haven't got any resentments. Doesn't mean you haven't got any things that make you angry. Doesn't mean, absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up because it's true. It is. They're human beings. They're human beings just like you are, and they're no less or more important than you. Yeah. If you talk to anyone who's become famous, so to speak, they'll be the first to tell you that, that yeah. they, not, they did not find happiness. In fact, it made their lives mis more miserable in a lot of ways. So, so we've got to question the things we've been taught as society that are important, particularly the United States and the ideas that it set forth in terms of you got to get, you got to this, and you got to that. And, but, you know, everything's got to, got to pretend like everything's fine. He talks also, Eckhart Tolle talked about how in India, everything's out in the street. People are dying in the street. You see dead bodies. You see old people. You see the sick. And that's just how it is in India. In the United States, everything's shut away. The old people are shut away. The sick people are shut away. See, there's this pretense that that stuff isn't going on. Yeah. So I'm not saying either way is good or bad but it really takes you helps you take pause again on what really matters and i think again trying to get back to my own personal journey of realness of of you know i um i'm gonna do my best to take care of myself yeah my best to do the practices and things that will help me feel good in that day in that moment yeah and i'm still gonna I might screw up. I might mess something up. And that's okay. If, and that's where we get back to the self-love. Mm. If you can say, you know, to yourself, it's okay that there might be a mess here or there might be a problem or yeah. I'm a problem. Uh, Eckhart Tolle said, one of the other things he said recently, I've been listening, listening to him, he said, you're not just a culmination of life situations you are life you are life mm. that makes me hard when I think about it beautiful because beautiful life situations this is my situation this is my life situation you're not your life situations you are life itself so you can let that go accept that you may have life situations but not identify with your life situations. yes yes and I know if my boyfriend's listening to me right now here he comes he's gonna give me crap the next time here he is the next time <laughs> Remember what you said about not being your life situation? <laughs> right. And I will forget sometimes. Yes, time. we forget. We forget so quickly. <laughs> and, so, and, and whatever, if you feel like, I know if I feel like there's a, a force that's trying to get us, yeah. you know, whatever you want to call the devil, whatever the ego. Yes, yes. Over, you got to just know. I think I remind, want to remind myself that you are a child of God, child of the universe, whatever you want to call it, and you that cannot overtake you. It cannot. Mm. You have to get into a place of reminding yourself of what that is. Yeah. It's, it's, when you shine a light on it, it will go away. Does it mean it's not going to come back? Yeah, exactly right. It's not, doesn't mean it's not going to come back. I think those are the wise words <laughs> because it's true Quana. i mean some people often email me and go oh you're always so happy you're always no i'm not i just don't do youtubes when i feel crap <laughs> i feel crap often too you know at least once a week or something happens you know this week two things happened that knocked me off my perch i was upset I was upset that I couldn't sleep. I was annoyed. I was, you know, I, I am, it's remembering that it, this stuff does, you can work on it, but you're human and you're living and working. You're on a journey. You're not, I don't go into robot mode and switch off all my feelings and then nothing ever happens. Stuff happens regularly. It's, but then you, you go through it more quickly. You go, right, ho'oponopono, meditation, surrender, let go. I'm going to look at what I want because this is really what I don't want. And you switch more quickly. You don't stay in the quicksand as, as long. But it doesn't mean you don't have that initial exact same emotional reaction. Exactly. 
Yep. Yeah, you certainly do. And it, it, um, yeah, it's, it's humbling. It reminds you that you're still not great at stuff. It reminds you that you still got a long way to go. It reminds you that, you know, no matter what you say at the quiet moments in the middle of the night, do you still feel unloved? You know, whatever it is or unwanted or that you're not good enough because you haven't done X, Y, Z by the time you're 50 or whatever it is. You know, there's still little things that creep in and you still got to go, okay, that's still there. Hello, there you are. And that's an excellent point, Agnes, because one thing I've struggled with since I was a kid was not feeling good enough. Yeah. And I didn't even know cautiously that what it was, what it was, was. Mm. not feeling like I was good enough. Yep. And, um, this thing they call the ego. Some people call it the devil or whatever. It, I think it, I, I don't like calling it the devil, but the ego mindset that not that, that negative energy force, that seems like prevalent on the, in the world. Mm. Some feel that originated from having to survive for physical survival yep. years ago, but it morphed into something else over time when we were able to get to a point of not worrying so much about physical survival. But then it became this other thing where it is relentless. It, 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 it's 24 hours a day, like a ticker tape across your screen, like your mind just going all the time, just talking, stop, just talking all the yeah, time. Yeah, like those, those ad, those, uh, you know, when you're watching, when I used to watch the news, then they pop up all the breaking news yeah. down the bottom. <laughs> it's like the breaking news. Okay. Yeah. And that, that, that is not you. Your real you mm. is more, much, uh, much greater than that. The real you is not of that. And those are the glimpses that we all have, whether it's through living in the end, whether it's through Ho'oponopono, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through having a good talk, cry or talk, whatever it is, praying, whatever it is, where you get those glimpses of that yeah. sense of your real self. Yeah. And um, you... you I think for me personally, you got to build on that. And some also, I think whoever's in your life, that's like, say your, your, your person challenges you on some things. Yeah. I think they're supposed to, I think you got to hang in there. You know, when I was in my twenties and thirties, it was easy to just go to the next, go to the next. Yeah. Time. But when you get a little older, <laughs> you yeah. know, you have a greater sense of, of that that you know i'm i'm just switching to another person isn't necessary because i'm going to bring all my stuff to this other person or to this other situation or to this yeah. other city whatever exactly you, and so i i do not have the answers i don't have the answers i don't have, really have any answers but i think what i want <sighs> myself is that i came here with some gifts that I was given. Yep. I came here to do these, share these gifts with people. I didn't come here to just suffer forever and just, yeah. you know, myself because I have this. That's not, that's not why I'm here. Yeah. And whatever all these messages over time, all the way from Buddha to Jesus to all of the, the wonderful, brilliant people we have today, including yourself, because ultimately whoever's listening, you are your own best teacher. You are your own best guide. I, and that's one of the things in um, Ask It It Is Given. Yes. We discuss that nobody can tell you what's best for you. Take it in, listen to whatever you want to, but ultimately you are your own best guide. You already have it in you to know. Yes. What, what your own internal guidance system, that's what they call it. It's called yeah. But you, you already know, you don't need this constant, you talk about that. You don't need yeah. this constant, this, and should I do this, yeah. should I do that? Stop, stop doing that. Try yeah. looking, and I know it's not easy. Yeah. But if you go within, you don't have to talk about everything that's going on in your life either. You don't have to tell, because yeah. I've noticed, especially with my girlfriends over the years, yes. we get together and you just get the complaint sessions about, yeah. I mean, why are we, stop complaining getting into complete trying to find yeah. deep conversations that yeah. produce energy that produce life that talk yeah. about what you want to do not just complaining yes or if you're going to talk about do it in a way that's 
I wonder what ways I can, what's going on with me that this yeah. is happening. Yeah. Yeah. How can I be better? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that yet. And, and sometimes that situation or that person will still make you mad, will still frustrate you. But I think accepting that you're going to have new human emotions that we're not, like you said, we're not robots. We, yeah. we can to experience emotion, mm. to experience what it's like to eat chocolate. Yeah. What it's like to touch things. Yeah. physical experience, which is very intense. Yeah. Very intense. But there's, I see a lot of younger people too trying, I think you probably get all age ranges that contact you. Yep. A lot of younger people uh, seem to be, uh, I don't know if that's true, but it seems like, Maybe older people are about to embarrass. I don't know, but it seems like. Do you have more younger people trying to contact you? And and uh, my channel's watched mostly by the twenty fives to thirty fives. Okay. I only looked. I only looked that up today, because I was showing someone the the behind the scenes. Um, but yes, even though that's the main age group, it still goes all the way up to sixty plus, and all the way down to about. Someone contacted me. They were sixteen, seventeen. So. It's a big range, really. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's good. I, that it, it might be more co concentration on the younger folks because they're more used to technology. Yeah. That could be the reason for that. But it definitely is occurring across all ages. People try to wake up, try to find answers. I like what the young, young lady said. She's been trying to find answers. She's always trying to find answers. And that's me. I'm always digging for answers, trying to find answers. What's going on? I'm just trying to dig stuff up. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I think the, one of the biggest things today, as I sit here today, is just breathing and reconnecting to myself. And it's my job and responsibility to remind myself of who I really am. Yep. And no matter what book, what teacher, what situation you're in, who's telling you. You've got to remember, your, it's your job to remind yourself who you are, who you yep. really are. If you're, yeah. on this, if you're on this channel, you're already open to those ideas. You don't need a teacher. You don't need a guru. Yep. You, don't need, you need support, sure. But yes. in you to, and sometimes it's just like, hey, look, I screwed yeah. this up. Or I screwed that up. Or, and sometimes you can't do it. Sometimes you're afraid to do it and that's okay um you talked about jerry hicks so what he died of cancer well study if you're if you're jerry hicks you study his life before he even met um uh esther yeah in the depression his family lived in chicken coops and yeah. horrible horrible poverty yep this man already came to he recovered from that and came to a sense of, of financial freedom yep and he he was determined to find answers so yeah. be inspired rather than worrying about how he he yes look at what he did prior to that and the gift yeah. he left the fact that hicks and so many other teachers talk about let go of this thing about death you have this thing about death yeah okay we're gonna yeah. die we're gonna leave our bodies and our energy, our lives will continue. Yes. And if it, if it will continue. And I'm not saying, you know, just if you could embrace that overnight, but start to accept that and that it's okay. I, I, people focusing on say, getting mad because a spiritual teacher died. I mean, I don't understand that. I mean, Buddha died. I mean, you're going to, you're going to leave your body. And yeah. you're supposed to. Yeah. And someone, I remember someone said to me once, you're here right now and it's, you know, December 2018. In 100 years, pretty much everyone on the planet will be dead. <laughs> and I remember going, gee, I've never actually thought of it that way. But yeah, there might be a few that live over 100, but pretty much all of us will be gone. <laughs> and I thought, oh, wow, that just was really enlightening. This, like I never, you just never thought of it that way. You're not going to be here. And guess what? The thing you're worrying about right now isn't going to matter either. It's not going to matter. Also the, also, the other thing is to not try to get, if you're doing this kind of stuff, don't try to get the other people in your life to do it. No. And also, like my person, for example, 
He's, you know, alpha male type. He likes football. But he has his, he has his own way of enlightenment. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it, you don't have to be studying a certain thing in order to have. No, I, I agree. I agree. And, I, and that, and if you do think so, then you've still got my way is the only way thinking, which we know there are many religions that still teach that. And, and there are many political things that still teach that. And it's, you know, you can, if that's how you want to go, that's totally fine. But embracing that people have their own way personally in their religion, in their politics, in their, and as Esther Hicks talks about it, and she's the one that probably talks about it the best. It's, you don't have to have everybody doing things the same way. You've got vibrational islands anywhere where you meet up with your people that like to do the same things as you. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, in, yes. And of course, the miracle says there are teachers of God who don't know it. There are people who are conspiring with God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, and don't know it. Yeah. Not so I'm conspiring with God. There's, you can probably think of examples of people that you've run into who may or may not be of any kind of path necessarily, but they, there's, there's something they might say, there's something they might do, there might be something they're doing in the world. Yeah. That's part of trying to make a difference, trying to, and there's, there's people I know that are like that. So it's not necessarily, it's absolutely not about my idea of what that person is supposed to be. Yeah. And part of that coming, to, and it's not easy, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's not easy, but if you can come to baby steps of accepting that daily, especially if you're in a relationship with somebody, <laughs> or even a it doesn't matter if it's romantic or not, just anybody. Yes, siblings, parents, yeah, it doesn't matter what the relationship is, yeah. People you're interacting with, uh, and uh, if you can come to that grad with each encounter. Each yes, time. yes. You, you can see how you can move through it, how you can get back to, it's like a sense of humbleness as yeah. well. And again, these things are not easy to, there's this, and none of the things I'm talking about, I am by any means perfect at, I'm not, I'm never going to be perfect at all these things. Yeah. It's just, I think that it's really been more me reminding myself, who am I? Even asking that question, who am yeah. I? Why am I here? Yeah. I don't know if anyone has asked that question, but why am I here? Why did why am I here? <laughs> yes, what am I doing here? I yes. Yes. <laughs> and it certainly isn't um yeah. And I'm a person that you know likes deeper conversations. I'm I'm mm. people are not I, I and this might sound like a judgment, but I feel like most people are not don't want I don't know, I did this is my bad, but I feel like most people just sort of want to live in this, like, not talking about the real stuff that's going on. Just want to run from, by going out, and, and, and I did that for a long time. Yep. So really, there will be a point, though, where you will have to deal with your stuff. You yeah, will it, it finds you. It finds you. <laughs> <laughs> You and Dan have talked about that. Well, it will catch up to you, not as a punishment. No, just as a byproduct. <laughs> yeah. You got to turn around and look at it. Yeah. You yeah. do the best you can. I think also doing the best you can. I'm yeah. doing the best I can right now. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. I've asked myself, well, why didn't I get a record deal? Why didn't I? How come I? I can sing like so-and-so. How come I? Yeah. And my person has checked me on that many times yeah maybe that maybe the music industry is not would have killed you i mean we've had these discussions yeah so it's again for me i didn't come here with a musical gift to to necessarily certain be a certain way that music yeah when i sit down and play guitar and sing everything just drops away mm. everything drops away that's what if you're concerned about what your calling is or what your gift is whatever it is it when you when it just what all time seems to disappear yeah all your problems seem to disappear yeah then when you, that because it starts with your own healing when i play guitar yeah I'm healing myself. yeah see so i think you know i'm coming on here because and i i gotta be honest I was um, 
because of the challenges I had in the last six months, I felt like, you know, maybe I shouldn't interview with Agnes. I don't have it. Yeah. Happen. Yeah. I haven't, really happened. I haven't fixed the money. I haven't fixed this. I haven't fixed that. Yeah. And I really was like a little embarrassed to be honest. Mm. I felt like, what am I going to tell her? Yeah. You know? Um, but now yeah. I realize that this is really the real conversation. Yeah. Like, and maybe whoever's watching this, if you look back at my interviews back in, my interview back in um, June, I guess it was. Yep. I, yes, I had come back together with my person, but <laughs> by no means was that like some, you know, <laughs> happy fairytale ending. It, yeah. It, it was not like that. And I felt a sense of, inadequacy for a few months that I didn't have a good story to tell necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for. Yeah. Is that true? I'm going to, I'm no, I think what you've shared is good. You know, a lot of people will relate to, cause I get about 50 emails a day that are, you know, still struggling. Why I want to be a success story. I want to write you a great email. I want to be able to, you know, why isn't this working for me and all this stuff. So I do think there has to be, yes, the channel is about success stories. It's about interviews where people have succeeded and all that stuff. But like you say, I manifested that, but it doesn't mean the whole rest of my, everything's working well. And I think it's going to be good for people to hear that this is a journey. It has its ups and downs. Yes, I manifested this, but all these other things aren't working right now. I'm still a work in progress. It's still to be continued and it's going to be until the day I pop off, you know, like it's really, that's what it is. <laughs> you had it. You got a visual of that one, didn't you? term. <laughs> I, I don't know. I probably. <laughs> So yeah, it really is about, you know, just sharing the, there is all this inspired, wonderful, amazing stuff that some people are doing, but usually prior to that, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't working, that wasn't happening, that needed to be worked through. And people go through their stages of looking for reassurance on the outside, through other people, through tarot, through psychics, through astrology, through counseling, through therapy, through, and they're all stepping stones, nothing wrong with it. You just get to a point eventually, as you do more and more and more, like what you say, you come back to more and more, I'm the best person to help me. And you work on doing that. You st slowly strip away all the outside reassurances and you're left with just your raw and naked self. And you work between you and that. And you get better at being kind to yourself, judging yourself less, working on your self-love, reading different things, like you said, different authors, different people that you just podcast, books, law of attraction, non-law of attraction, all sorts of different things. And you absorb what you like and you leave the rest. And you, you know, everybody's going to have a different filter and take, you know, you're going to shake the filter and some stuff's going to come through and you're going to go, yes, I like that. And those pieces I'm chucking out. So, and that's what's so great about interviews is because everybody's got a different way. Everybody's got a different toolkit. Everybody's got a different ways of doing their self-love. Everybody has got different childhoods different cultures, different backgrounds, different languages, different sexual preferences. And that's what makes, what makes this, makes this, makes this so and learn at least one thing from them and go, gee, I've never thought about it that way. And that is the thing that I love because I learn stuff every interview as well. So we share and exchange information and hopefully that information gives a bit more relief. Yep. That I think is really at the end of the day, what we're looking for is relief. I agree. That sense of relief when you have a, <clears throat> feel like you've been able to say yeah. something in your life or even, and also to, in, uh, what I've been saying to myself now today is I know I'm not, I haven't perfected my self love yet. I haven't perfected, I haven't, and I may not, but I know that I deserve. Yeah. To, 
I know that I'm, I am a loving being and it's okay. You know, it's okay. Whatever mistakes I've made, whatever, whatever, it's, it's all right. And, and I've lived fully because of yeah, those. Yeah. I took the juice out of life. Mm. Um, you know, Eckhart Tolle says the stronger pain body you have, the better, because it gives you more opportunity to dig deep. If you don't have much of a pain body, you're not going to really be challenged that much. So part of that <laughs> is embracing the challenge, which has been particularly hard for me to do. I have to admit that. Yeah. It's been really hard for me to do and beating up on myself for having all these years of spiritual study. And why am I still having these same issues again? Yeah. So I can you, just know that whoever is going on, or whoever is listening to this, you're not alone in that. And yeah. And yeah. With it. But it's better to focus on finding ways to accept the things that are happening and keep working on yourself. Whatever way serves you, it helps you feel better, helps you raise mm. your mood. Dancing in the car. Yeah. To music music is a big thing. Music's a big thing. Car affirmations while dance, while music, while you're doing affirmations while you're listening to music. Also, people get off social media, okay? And, or, or pare it down. Yeah. Facebook and Instagram is mm. going to kill you. So be mindful of the whole social media thing. That's, that's, not, that's not the real you. That's not the way to really a interact mm. with people. I love YouTube because there's content. Yeah, and it's helpful. It's helpful. YouTube can has its issues, I know, but YouTube provides opportunities for people to connect. Yep. I found Ignace. Yeah. The world and I can talk to her. But like the Facebook and the Instagram, just, just lay off of it. Unless you're using it for something, a business mm. or whatever. But you don't need to be on social media. you got to keep Yeah. And TV. Keep it. Mm. Be mindful of what you're putting in. Yeah. And the movies keep make yeah. sure you, like what Agnes said earlier be mindful of what you're putting what you're let, allowing in mm. that's, yeah that's oh, I agree do. I agree and it's it's keeping your emotional and mental st self in the best optimum state you can and part of that is keeping those things out I agree with you Quana I mean I think I get on Facebook once a month and that's really I, I don't for me it's not in really that enjoyable I go in there because there's a Neville group I like to pop into that's why I go in um, and that's enough you know but yes I agree with you it's it's it chews through a lot of energy and time where you could be putting that into your passion or researching the thing you want to create or working on your music or playing your guitar or painting or dancing or doing Zumba or whatever that is your thing, yoga, that you put the energy into you, not that you expel it into social media and waste it because you're wasting your energy and your time a lot of the time if you're using it daily excessively, you know you will know what level is good for you. But I find now that I've pretty much let go of it completely, that it is very much, I've got more time to listen to podcasts. I've got more time to, you know, have interesting interviews with people and have really good, meaningful conversations. And that is rewarding. It's satisfying. It's energy giving. It's, you know, you, you bounce off each other and you, you work something out or you, you, you listen to someone's bit of information. You go, wow, never thought of that. I'm going to apply that. And you create a 1% better life today and a 1% better life tomorrow. 1% is enough. Doesn't it? The turtle wins the race. It does. <laughs> I love the turtle. It's my favorite animal because it's so undervalued. <laughs> But it is the one. What's they're, that? They're really cute. They're yeah, really cute. they are. They are. But very slow, very steady, very peaceful, very deliberate. There's something to learn from that animal. <laughs> yes. Wow. Well, we've talked nearly for an hour and a half. So I think we, uh, <laughs> we will come to a close. Is there any last words you want to say, Quana, before we sign off? Anything? 
Uh, I would say to everyone, I'm right there with you, okay? And um, embrace yourself as best you can. Embrace yourself as best you can because you deserve that for yourself, if no other. You're your own best guide. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're going to fall off the wagon or the ladder or whatever it is. But just get back up and... Um, you deserve, you may not feel self-love in that moment or that day, but know that, that you deserve to feel that way about mm. yourself, you know, whatever means necessary. And, and it's okay if things aren't, things aren't going to be some pretty perfect, they're just not. Yeah. So just accept, accept, accept that about, about yourself. And I think just be, be authentic. Yeah. I think, you know, social media, uh, people put on their what they want the world to see and or what people to see and that's not yeah. be, be be authentic make a real phone call go to someone's house don't just text don't just yeah make real contact with somebody yeah most mostly with yourself yeah make contact with yourself mm. yeah fabulous last words fabulous last words well we were go we are going to sign off. Quan, I stay on the Zoom and we'll say goodbye in private. Thank you, everyone. Anything that we discussed in the interview, I will put the links down below to the bits and pieces Quana mentioned, and um, then you can explore it a bit further. So I will see you in the next YouTube. Bye, everybody.